Mike Pacella here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be talking about Get Back as recorded by the Beatles on January 27th, 1969. Now, almost a whole month of January, the Beatles were in Twickenham Studios um, working on new songs for their, for their next album. And a couple months ago, they just finished the White Album, which is like 30 songs. So, you know, they're doing a lot of jamming. And Get Back starts off as a jam with Paul just thumping on that, uh, those eighth notes and uh, going through some chord changes. Uh, Paul says that initially it was a protest song, and there's a, a, a verse that never got released that goes, uh, Meanwhile, back at home, there's 19 Pakistanis living in a council flat. A uh, candidate for labor tells them what the plan is, then he tells them where it's at. <laughs> and there's also a, a, a different version that's handwritten by John Lennon that's hanging in the Hard Rock Cafe, San Francisco. Well, a couple days into the rehearsal on the 10th, George announces he's leaving the Beatles. He's fed up with all the arguing that's going on. The cameras are probably making it a little weird. Uh, so he splits. And there's that famous uh, argument you've probably seen where, where they're working on two of us and Paul tries to get George to play a little less. And George says, I'll play whatever you want me to play. Or I won't play at all if you don't want me to play. Whatever it is that pleases you, I'll do it. <laughs> well, uh, so they continue to rehearse without George Harrison. And on January 13th, John Lennon starts playing lead guitar on Get Back. And uh, John also says, If George doesn't come back by Monday or Tuesday, we ask Eric Clapton to play. Now, of course, that would never happen because George and Eric were good friends and Clapton wouldn't have done that. Luckily, on January uh, 22nd, George decides to come back into the group. But he insists they move the rehearsals to Apple Studios on Savile Row and that they include uh, Billy Preston on, uh, on uh, keyboards, you know, to deter all the bickering. January 23rd, they re, uh, they, the arrangement was finally completed. You know, uh, Ringo's now playing that galloping uh, um, uh, snare drum thing. And uh, they do 43 rehearsals of the song that day because they insist on doing this album with no overdub or double tracking, which hadn't been done since She Loves You. Uh, on January 27th, now they record 32 versions of Get Back, and they finally get one. It's either 18 or 11, depending on what you read, is the uh, take that ends up being the single. Uh, the next day, they record again, and they do the coda ending, which they're going to uh, uh, edit later. So that's when that coda was recorded. Two days after that, on the 30th, they're on the rooftop at Apple headquarters doing that, that uh, live concert outside. And they, and they record five versions of Get Back that day. Now, in the Let It Be film, they cut between versions two and, two and three of the uh, rooftop performance uh, to simulate a live performance. And then there was a promo film cut with live, live uh, video from the, from the uh, rooftop and also the, the single version. So there's really no uh, recorded video of them playing the, the version that we hear on the 45. March 10th, they, uh, they, they send Glenn Johns to uh, Olympic Studios to mix uh, Get Back. Uh, about uh, a week or so later, um, maybe a couple weeks, Paul decides that he's not happy with that mix, so he goes back with Glenn Johns uh, into uh, Olympic Studios, and that's finally the mix that they get to, to be the single, and of course, that's where they edit the, uh, the coda onto the ending. Um, it was released in the UK on April 11th, and it's the first Beatles single to be released in stereo with Don't Let Me Down on the B-side. And uh, it was released in the U.S. on May 5th, 1969. And it's the only single uh, to ever feature another artist on the label. On the label it says The Beatles with Billy Preston. And of course the Let It Be album, uh, May 18th, 1970, that's when that was released. So uh, I think that's the backstory. Uh, you know, John Lennon does a great job playing lead and rhythm guitar. And, uh, you know, uh, George Harrison kind of takes an ensemble uh, a seat on the tune because, well, he quit the band in the middle of rehearsals. <laughs> so let's get started. <laughs> John Lennon is playing his Epiphone Casino through a silver face Fender Twin Reverb on Get Back and So Am I. Uh, it starts off on an A7 chord. He voices the full A7, but he just plays the low four strings. And he plays eighth notes, you know. And then he plays a G and a D. He voices his G. And then his D. Now you may have seen footage of him when they're rehearsing, he's playing that like this, you know, when he's goofing around, but trust me, 
That's not what he did on the record. He used the pick. Okay, now we're into the verse. And on the verse, he does the kind of basic Chuck Berry rock and roll where you're playing like an A chord, A power chord, root and fifth, to the root and sixth. But on the beginning of uh, each measure, when it's a new chord, he, 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 plays an, he plays eighth notes. So he goes like... And then he plays that iconic riff. That happens on the uh, third string, second string, and first string. Uh, third string, fret 11, you slide up. Uh, string uh, B, B string, you get a 10th fret, 12th fret. Bend that 12th fret of the B. With your pinky, get the 12th fret of the E string. Release that B, 12th fret, 10th fret, 11th fret. So. So learn that well, because he does it a lot. And then he repeats. Oh, and right before he gets to the next uh, A, he does a low E. Now in the chorus, he plays a cool little riff. He goes... And that's 6th string, 9, 5th string, 7, 9, 4th uh, string, 7. And he plays an A7 voice like this. Repeats that. Same lick into a D7. And back. He does that twice. Uh, on the second time of the chorus, he, on the D7, he doesn't, he doesn't play an A7. He, just, he ends with to set up for the solo. So um, a verse and chorus is like this. Um, for his first uh, solo. John Lennon's first solo is based pretty much on the riff that he played during the verse, and it goes like this. Okay, now, a couple of noteworthy things is one is to make sure you get that bend on the end of four of the first measure. So, right, and, the, and that high E comes on the end of one of the second measure. And then he plays the same little lick that, that he played kind of during the chorus, but it applies to D. And then and bends that C a little sharp. And the second part, now this time, he bends on, on beat one. And then this little lick that he plays a number of times in the song is... So it's kind of like if you were playing an A, and you would bend the sixth to the fifth, kind of like A minor. And before he gets in the chorus, he plays a low E. So it's... Now, during this chorus, um, he doesn't do the, because he's singing in harmony, and he, and he just plays straight, like, you know, Chuck, Chuck Berry rock again. He goes like, um. Back to where you once Stays on A. 
kind of little C to D to kick into uh, the Billy Preston solo. Now during Billy Preston's solo, um, again just playing, you know, Chuck Berry rock and roll. And he repeats that twice. Okay, third verse, pretty much the same with the, you know. Uh, but on the second part of the of that verse, he plays the uh, he plays the. Now again, there's there's charts and tabs uh, at mikebicelli.com. I wrote out ten pages of the exact parts, every measure that John and George plays. If you want it perfectly, but I'm uh, I'm I'm trying to condense this so this this lesson isn't three hours long. Okay, uh, on the next chorus, <clears throat> he plays the same thing like the first chorus. You know. And it comes to his second solo. John Lennon's second solo is reminiscent of his first, but it's a little more playful and spontaneous. It goes like this. Now, a couple of things to set that up right is um, to get two eighth notes on the on beats four and of the first measure. So you go. Um, so that makes you bend that bend on beat one of the second measure. So, and then that that cool A minorish lick. And that time he goes all the way up to to a D note. He goes. And then finishes it with, and again, two more B notes, bends on one. Now when he, he, he gets this double stop, he, he pinkies down and gets both notes, you hear, releases, and just balls to the wall. Again, charts and tabs at mikevicelli.com. I wrote it out perfectly if you want to know, you know exactly how it goes. Uh, and then the, this chorus, same thing that he did uh, on the other courses. Yeah. But the way he ends, he just he stops on D7 the second time around. So the second time, you know. And then the piano, boom, ba dum da dum and then the drum thing breaks in, and uh, when he comes back for the coda, John is just playing sh for the first um, three measures, just straight Chuck Berry rock and roll, you know, just. And then he goes into his chorus thing. And that's what he plays all the way out for the fade. For the fade, he goes. that three times on the fade. So those are all the parts you need to play Get Back Just Like John Lennon. George Harrison is playing his Rosewood Telly through a Silver Face Fender Twin Reverb. This is a 62 reissue Telly. Great uh, guitar if you can get your hands on one, do try it out. Um, basically what he's doing is just kind of eighth notes, but it's a mute strum, mute, strum. So what that means is you, you voice the A chord up to the G string and then let, you know, just touch the strings, don't push down to the fret, just and then push the strings down to get the notes. So the intro would sound like this. And then he plays a G to a D. Now that fourth measure, full strummed out. So, you know, 
okay? And then he's into the verse. He continues that same basic mute strum, mute strum. Um, when he gets to the D chord, pretty much the fourth, third, and second string is all you hear of a D chord. So. Now on the choruses, um, he starts that, then he plays quarter notes. Quarter notes on the D, quarter notes on the A. And now he plays this uh, new figure, and you'll need this A7. So he kicks from a low A to a high uh, A on the G string to a low A, so like this. Back to that mute. So of course it would sound like this. You know, get back. All right, now to John Solo, he's just muting and playing quarter notes uh, for a good part of it. So. On John solo, he just just puts his hands and doesn't press down on any chord in particular. Just when he gets to the D, he plays a little D interval on beats two and four. So G D. Same thing. This time he plays D on on beat one. Again, charts and tabs at mikepicelli.com. There's uh, five pages of George Harrison, so you could get exactly what he played on every measure if you like. Okay, next chorus, uh, he continues with the uh, quarter note muting. And then, doesn't play on, on uh, a chord on this one he plays. And back to. That leads into um, uh, Billy Preston's piano solo. Now on the piano solo, he continues that eighth note thing. Same thing. Now in this verse, back to muting. Thought she was a woman. Definitely an ensemble part. Okay, now in this course, at the very first time, this is the third course, yeah, the third course, he goes, just does that once, back to chord note muting, and then, and when he plays these uh, A7 accents, it's a little different notes, it's, John second solo again, quarter notes, muted, does that twice, back to the chorus. Oh, now on this one, is this the fourth chorus? One, two, three, four. Yeah, he, there's a, there's one little D in there. It's pretty cool. So it's like, um, um, I'm sorry. Right? <laughs> he plays a D right there, and then back to uh, oh, now he's he's playing just um, chord note, chord note, eighth notes on these, just like. into um, uh, the, the very ending he plays. Implying C to D, so just a G and a C note to that 
small D chord. And then the drum fill of boop 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 back to quarter notes. He does that twice, and then he's fading out on that on the new version. Just. It's a really cool part. Again, charts and tabs to get it perfectly. Oh, I almost went through the whole thing. Uh, if you'd like to see it exactly, there's uh, you know 10 total pages of the charts and tab for John and George's part. All right, um, I put it together for reference for you. So let's take a look at how all the parts fit together. enjoyed seeing how all those parts fit together. I suggest you learn John and George's part. Play along with my sound alike and you'll get it just like the Beatles. And if you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. That's where the charts and tabs are available to download for all of my lessons. And if you would, please subscribe to this channel. And have fun while you're playing these songs because that's what playing the guitar should be all about. I'm Mike Pacelli and until next time, thanks for hanging out with me. Some